Are you ready to start using ChatGPT in your Google Sheets without relying on an add-on, complicated scripting, or going to a different website? In today's video, I'll show you how to incorporate this simple script into Google Sheets using a custom function, just like this. So that way you can put in a prompt in your Google Sheet and get a response just like that. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So we're going to circle back around and we're going to create this app script to run the custom function. So we'll go ahead and open that. But first of all, let's look at the settings for open AI. So that way you can access the chat GPT. And so here's the website here. I put a link in the description below. So either way you get to that. If you've not created an account already, you will need to create one and log in. And then I will show you one more thing before we jump into this is you may get some credits when you first sign up, but otherwise after that you are going to have to set up some billing and you can either do that by doing a credit balance or doing auto recharge. Now, finally, let's go to dashboard and then create our API keys and we're almost done here. So we need to create an API key. This is going to be basically our password to accessing this. So we're going to create a new key. We'll just call this one Google Sheets. It doesn't really matter what you call it. This is just your reference. Create the secret key. And then we're going to copy this and we'll use it when we start building our script. So let's go ahead and jump over here. So we'll just call this chat GPT, our project here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a custom function. And so what we do in custom functions, we make it all uppercase. So you could do chat GPT if you want. I'm going to do chat underscore GPT just to make it a little more understandable. And then I'm actually going to put this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to put that secret key right here. Secret key equals and then paste that key in. All right. So we can start getting going here. I'm going to copy in some notes that I'm going to explain here as I build this. And so I'm going to leave this in the template version so you can go to the description as well and download the final template with this script in there. Now, so here's the link there as well. And then I have some little bit of explanation on tokens, which we'll get to in a minute. So first of all, what we want to take in with the custom function, because we're going to use it in here, is the text that we want to put in. And so we're going to call that our prompt. And then we're managing some token usage here. And this is optional, so you can leave this alone. But I like to add this in just to prevent accidental over usage. And so I'm going to say tokens equals to 200. And so what this is going to allow us to do is if you don't enter anything for the tokens part, it's going to default to 200. Uh, or maybe we'll up this to 290, something like that. Uh, 290 would be 50 words per response. And this just helps you to manage your usage, which is important as... Um, you start seeing some billing, especially if you're using this a lot. So I'm going to also copy in a section here, and this is just the custom function parameters, and it gives you a little bit of a context. Let me go ahead and save this. And so if we type in chat GPT now, you can see that it has that text in there and gives a little more detail. So send to chat GPT. If you see, we update that and then we go back here, chat GPT, open this up and they can see uh, there's the prompt. That's what we just edited there. So this just gives you some helper text. So I'm not gonna explain all this at the moment. Let's go ahead and jump in the function because that's why you guys are here. So let's go back here and we're going to go to this API reference and this chat is what we're going to do today. And so we need this URL. So let's go ahead and start with that URL equals to completions. And then we need to build a request and send it to chat GPT. So it gives us an example here in curl. Uh, node is fairly similar. It uses a slightly different context than what we're doing. So if you're using a different Python or curl or node, you can use those. But what we're going to do is kind of use essentially the same kind of thing here. And so these H means headers. So we need two header 
things that we need to send with it and tell it what content type we're using. And then there's that API key. And then this D is the body or the payload. And so we're gonna send some stuff here like the model we wanna use. And then this messages thing is where we're gonna send that prompt. So let me show you how to build this in AppScript. So let's go ahead and we'll start with our payload or body. And so we'll just call this payload and we're going to use what's called an object. So it has these curly braces. And then inside that, we're gonna specify a couple things. So first of all, our model. And then in this example, we're just gonna use the chat GPT 3.5 turbo. So you can experiment with using different ones and the results you'll get back will obviously be a little different in each case. So we got the model and then we need the messages. And so we're gonna do here messages. And so if you're looking for a more advanced version, you can actually send multiple messages, but we're gonna keep this simple for now. And we're just gonna do role. And you gotta tell it what role it is because you can actually pass back and forth multiple messages. So you could have role system and role user and build a uh, conversation. And so that's what that's about. But we're just gonna do a single response here. So we're just gonna have the one. And then content is gonna be our second one here. And then here we're gonna use the prompt. And so this prompt is what we're gonna put in when we type this in. So chat GPT, and then we can reference, for example, this cell, or we could type in something here. So that's what's gonna come through in this prompt here. And then that's good for the messages. And then we're adding this max tokens here. And again, this is optional. I'm doing this just to help manage what we're doing here. So there's our payload. And then we just need to finally build in those header because we need to add that content type and that authorization and then put it all together and send the request. So we're gonna wrap this inside an options and we're gonna do object here as well. And then in here, we're gonna do content type. So we can specify application forward slash JSON, and then here is our headers. And this is where we're going to put our authorization. So authorization and then bearer space, and then we can add that secret key here. And then finally, we need our payload. And what we're gonna do is basically take this object, so this in here, but you have to encode it, otherwise it's gonna result in errors. So we're gonna stringify this, and then we're gonna do that payload inside here, just like that. All right, so now we have our payload, we have our options parameter here, and now we can actually send the data. So we want to get the response to do something with it, so I'm gonna assign this to a variable, so results equals two, and then what we're gonna do is URL fetch app, and this fetch method, and now we can put a URL and options, and then what we're gonna do is get content text from this, but this is going to need to be parsed, because uh, we, as if you notice, we stringified, and we're gonna get the same thing back, and so we need decode, so we're gonna do JSON parse our response, that way we can use what we get back. And so finally, I'll explain just a little bit of what we get back. So the response here, if I can get this to scroll down. So here's our response. So we need to get inside of our response and get these choices, message, and content. So we're gonna iron down in here. And so we're gonna go ahead and just say return. And so what return does is it's telling this custom function what we're gonna send back as a response to that call. So inside that, we're going to do results and then choices and we're going to do zero. And so the reason why is they do actually allow you to do multiple choices. It's using this, if I can find it here, N. So an optional thing you could add in here is you could do number responses. And so you could do N and then you could do, you know, five or whatever you want to do there and increase the number of responses or choices that you get back, in which case you'd have to iterate through them. But for the sake of this one, we're gonna keep it simple. 
And then we're just gonna do message, content, and just to make sure we don't have anything unexpected, we're just gonna do a trim method, trim any spaces or anything like that. So with that, we are done. And so we got all the scripting done, believe it or not. And so let's go ahead in here and let's just give us a sample input, maybe say, and then we're gonna use our new custom function here. And then we're just gonna grab our input. And if you remember, we do have an optional, we can set the number of tokens we wanna to do, which is about how much we're gonna get back. And it looks like I put two J's right there. Let's go ahead and fix that. Now, if we come back here, there we go. Now it gave us a response. So here's five tips on being more productive in Google Sheets. So this custom function, you can embed in perhaps an if statement and you can do if C6 equals to blank, do nothing, otherwise chat GPT C6. The reason you do this is then you can copy and paste this down. Let's we'll do format only so it doesn't mess up our thing here. And then maybe we could set this to centered, maybe insert some alternate colors there for our rows. And then we could use this for something like this. We'll make our English correct here. And then what, what's gonna happen then is whenever you type in here, this will fill in. And so I'm sure at this point, now you can start seeing how you can use this in your different projects. So you could have some data, maybe you're coming up with title ideas or you have to come up with a summary or something like that. So you can set these in here and then put your data prompts in here and then have it automatically show up. So as you can probably tell, there's a bunch more that you could add to this. Even just when I was talking about the N and the choices, there's a lot more you could add to this as far as increasing what you're gonna do with this, but I just wanted to help you guys get your feet wet, be able to start using ChatGPT and Google Sheets using a very simple script and help you walk through that. And so that is it for today's video. Hope this was helpful for you guys. Make sure to check out my other videos on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, I'll see you around.